Okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, I'm here with my guest tonight, uh, Curran, and of course, when Curran's on stream, uh, that usually means a top eight has occurred, and uh, we fortunately are in the same time zone, so we can line up our uh, what is it called? We can line up a, a good time to uh, to stream together and go over his challenge run. Uh, the good, the better news is not only was it a top eight, it was a straight outright challenge win. So welcome, Curran, and uh, you know hope you've been doing well. And uh, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Newton. Uh, it's good to be back. I haven't really been playing all that much of this deck for a while. I've been kind of for the last few months. Uh, I still have been attending Legacy FNM in my local area, and I've been switching my deck up every week and kind of just like getting a little bit of time away. I think I think I was too deep in the tank the last time that I was like trying to keep up with everything that was shifting with this deck, and I got kind of confused and lost. And I don't know. I just needed some time away, uh, and then like. Coming back to it now just feels so good. I, I don't know. Like, the, the hands that I kept opening were just like, all right, yeah, I can make that work. Yeah. And then, like, it would just pan out. And uh, Underground Mortuary is just absolutely absurd. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's awesome. So thanks for having me. No, I'm glad to hear that. Um, that's actually a very good uh, a tip that I think anybody can use, to be honest. Like... If you're kind of struggling or you know tunnel visioning too much with a certain deck or a certain format, it's nice to take a break and maybe even like you don't necessarily have to try a different deck or format, but uh, at least take a break away from this deck. And I think you know having clear eyes seem to have uh, at minimum helped. Uh, and for sure, the other thing was in the past month we have been incorporating just new technology across the board in this deck. Uh, you know highlighted by obviously the underground mortuary but uh, a few other things such as the uh with the you know the release of uh warhammer 40k uh canoptic uh scarab swarm was addition to the deck uh soulless jailer has always been an attractive option that we never ran because we didn't have space uh pick your poison from the same set as underground mortuary so uh was the auto include immediately be for me at least um some people i think mass olay uh uh, Matt Ellington, <coughs> sorry, Mots is, is the correct pronunciation, <coughs> likes pick uh, Force of Vigor better because it is better against some certain matchups. But nevertheless, that opened the option to test Jailer, which has you know been very good. Uh, this was the the 75 you ran is essentially the same 75 that Brady ran when he top uh, eight early this month as well. And it is off only one card of what I streamed on Thursday uh, to a 5-0. So it's just like, you know, good result after good result. Um, you know, it's funny too because on Thursday I called it the best deck in Legacy in my opinion. And since then, we've had a 5-0 on stream, you know, you winning the, the challenge on Saturday night. And then, uh, I don't know the, the, the pilot personally, but there's a pilot also who top four the challenge today. Granted, with a slightly different list than than what you, Mots, and uh, Brady have uh, played. But still, um, that makes it four out of four pilots in the last month, which is kind of insane num uh, statistic, right? Four, going up four out of four in terms of top eights within a month for all of our pilots, which is four pilots. Um, I know that was a lot too, but I just like rambled on right now. But uh, yeah, any... I want to pass the ball back to you, uh, Kern, real quick. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, stop. Uh, what's one second? Uh, how do I do this? Yeah. Uh, there you go. So why don't you share your screen? Um, but if you want to quickly just gloss, uh, go over the list, and uh, since especially if you have fresh eyes from last night too, and I'll you know pop this out, and then everybody can kind of see. Uh, oh, geez. Uh, so I have this thing I do where I clean up my list files uh, after... Oh, no, no problem. No problem. I'll just share my... Uh, I'll, just, I'll still point to yeah. the, the, the Twitter uh, screenshot. 
Uh, oh, with... oh, wait. I, I have the image file, of course, because I made the image, so just give me a second. Okay, so, okay, I'll, uh, I'll go back but... to your screen then. Yep, sorry about that. Okay, um, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Um, was, since you have fresh eyes too, and, uh, you know, obviously the Force of Despair was added kind of within the last week or two weeks, I don't remember what it was. I think it might have been the last week. I don't, I don't remember, but... Yeah. Long, actually, two weeks ago, because this is the same deck that, list that Brady topped eight with, and uh, that was to you know shore up the Ancient Tomb matchup. How did the list feel, you know, as a whole? Any cards, like, you know, overperform, underperform? I'll, I'll leave the ball to you. Um, The list as a whole felt really solid. Uh... I did not get a ton of use out of the main deck, Mesmeric Fiend. I think it did come up, like, once or maybe even twice. Um, but uh, the, the Force of Despairs were absolutely... Well, Force of Despair is basically uh, what saved me against Turbo Muxus in round two. Um, Pick Your Poison is just absolutely cracked. It's the modal uh, ability as on those are just all relevant all the time. Um, so you like to pick yeah. your poison then? Yeah, I love Pick Your Poison. Mm -hmm. I think it's sick. I think it's very, very good. Um, I really think the list is incredibly tight right now i didn't get to use the fairy macabre though it would have been very nice in like multiple matchups i had mm -hmm. so i don't hate it being there still um and then yeah canoptic is just something that's pretty cool as well uh it just continues to be very good for me i think so yeah i mean i really like where the list is at at this moment in time no, that's good to hear. Like it sounds like sounded like um no card, you know, disappointed, if that makes sense. Yeah, nothing nothing really fell short necessarily. Uh I just Yeah. Uh I did think it was interesting and I'm gonna bring this up now, I guess. I was gonna wait until it was relevant during the finals match, but uh, the sideboard guide that is up right now has you bringing in uh, four copies of Thoughtseize instead of four copies of Snuff Out versus Death and Taxes. Okay. Um, and I thought that was interesting, uh, or maybe a mistype, or maybe I'm just not quite seeing it. Uh, do you have uh, an explanation for that one? I do. Um... Against the current most popular version of uh, Yorion Death and Taxes, which is, you know, essentially Orzhov splashing for uh, even green for God of Teague, um, the logic is Snuff Out actually doesn't actually have many targets outside of Stoneforge Mystic. And right. the idea is, in that scenario, Thought Seize is just as... It's slightly worse, but, but still effective. And I... Up until I when I, up until I, when I made the change, I kept having these really reactive snuff out hands against DNT, just no targets to hit because, like the like you don't care about bowmasters, um, you don't they're, they're not gonna keep in Thali presumably. Uh, the only thing that really you can hit is containment priest, but there's a chance they just tutor for opposition agent anyways. I just found it kind of dead like most of the time. And I'd rather just thought seize their equipment or thought seize the Yorion that is their engine or thought seize the opposition agent they find off uh, Recruiter. It was my logic. That all checks out. I did uh, I did adhere to the guide, uh, though uh, I did have a few of the internal kitchen members in the call with me, like during the top eight, and... There were questions flying around about why Snuff Out was not coming in at all and Thoughtseize was. And I was like, no, I think I understand. Because I was sitting there thinking about it, and I'm like, the only creature I can think I want to kill that's like main deck is Stoneforge Mystic. Because most of the creatures that 
uh, well, well, like solitude just comes down and does its thing immediately, and then it doesn't matter anymore. And like, yeah, uh, you were saying, you know, well, Bowmasters does its thing, then it doesn't matter. And like, yeah, it kind of started to make sense to me in my brain, and I thought I saw it, and so I just kind of do it anyway. So. No, that's good that you were able to work that out in your brain and kind of arrive at the same conclusion. So, like, pun intended, today's DNT is not your mom's uh, DNT, right? Like, there's, <laughs> there's just not. So, with that in mind, the other benefit of not boarding in snuff out is you just completely blank their moms, too. Like, maybe they changed because they know this now, but if they leave in the moms, they just have four dead cards immediately in the deck, right? Yeah, yeah. It's I like mean, you don't do anything in the matchup, and outside of maybe protecting from a grist, but that's like very narrow already. So that's like one benefit. But I found like this, the matchup to be very different than like your mom's DNT in, in yesterday's your or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but again, I think overall, uh, also. Uh, we will jokingly refer to Underground Mortuary as the land that saved Cradle Control. Uh, <laughs> just because, like, it, I, I, I was, like, raving about it to friends. Like, we can use it as, like, a counter spell versus Lightning Bolt, and, like, we can do all these things with it, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're like, oh, it's the land that saved Cradle Control. <laughs> yeah, I, I so. don't think people realize how broken the Surveil Lands are especially in an Elvish Reclaimer deck that, and I'm already playing the maximum number of fetches. Um, actually, I want to welcome in Tony's uh, audience here. Uh, oh, wow. You know. <laughs> Thank you for the raid, Tony. Uh, for those who don't know, um, I guess we'll, we'll mention it right now. Tony and, and myself and the other members of the, well, actually, I haven't really announced it publicly outside of like once. I haven't tweeted it, I guess, maybe, but I'm the newest... Uh, rotating member of the uh of tony's podcast the um brews of paradise and we actually recorded on friday without knowing that you were gonna win yesterday's challenge so it's kind of like good timing so <laughs> so, so well, tony actually awesome. you know foreshadowed that oh uh cradle control which you know i mentioned in the podcast i kind of half wish that i did not name it that because it's not really a control deck, but I think people take it too literally. Cradle Stompy. <laughs> Cradle Stompy. It's really a prison deck. Sorry, it's really a combo deck that has prison elements. But that's neither there, there nor n neither there nor here. Um, but uh, once that drops, I'll definitely link that out. The newest uh, episode seven of the Bruiser Paradise podcast. So, so you know, shout out to Tony for uh, you know taking uh, organizing that, but. Awesome. Well, congratulations, you. by the way. Sorry, say that again? Congratulations on being uh, the new rotating host on that uh, oh, podcast. Thank you. Yeah, I, it, it was my honor to join uh, you know, some of these fantastic deck uh, builders that I you know, have all have respected from afar, for sure. Actually, some I've even coordinated closely. Like uh, I mentioned there that um, Matt Sabo, uh, Punishing Waterfall, actually was the first person to play for Endurance in this kind of build, so, so he deserves credit for that. Right. Okay. Without further ado, if you want to share your matchups, uh, Kern, we can. Uh, yeah. We can go let's, through. Uh, let's get started. Um, and hopefully, everybody had a good, you know, stream with on Tony's behalf. All right. So uh, round one, we got paired against our friend Sage, um, and Sage surprised me this evening because whenever I see Sage, I just know that a dark ritual is going down and then <laughs> Tendrils of Agony is headed my way. Uh, so keep bearing that in mind, uh, we open our hand here. Um, and what I see here is kind of a serviceable seven. Um, what do you think about this hand? I think if you're putting your opponent on Dark Ritual, uh, I get I get why you would keep. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm on the draw, too, right? Like, I still have a shot at drawing, like, an untapped source. Uh-huh. Um, 
But, uh, so we end up keeping this hand. Uh, and they go City of Traders, Pitch Suiting Spirit Guide, uh, two Suiting Spirit Guides cast one for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, okay, well, now we know the jig is up. Um, the so, good thing is, even in that case, uh, it's not the end of the world. This hand actually is kind of functional, too, because if they don't have removal, which we know they don't. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, here, I was a little sad to miss the untapped source, and after some deliberation, uh, I decided to make a developmental play by pitching Dryad Arbor, uh, and then casting a Mana Donk. Hmm. Um, I think I would probably, in case you miss your land drop, leave the Arbor there just to pump up Cradle next turn. Mm. Yeah, I think probably it was, looking back, probably worth pitching a Noble instead. Uh, but anyway. It's funny too because, um, you know, we, we kind of, without thinking much about it too, uh, I probably would have just played the Arbor, but I think definitely pitching the Endurance to ramp is what is correct in this matchup. So uh, my quick gut instinct was would have been wrong there. But I think... If I had the chance to do it again, I'd probably take your line, except not pitch the Arbor as well. Um, so this is where I think Sage may have started to make a few mistakes on their end here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure it was correct to just leave this alive. Um, uh, I think given that you know your opponent led with Endurance off the Cradle, I for sure sacrifice the Sticker Goblin and kill the Noble Hire. Yeah, so we, we got off scot-free there a little bit, um, and we were able to kind of further develop uh, some creatures and hold the zenith. Um, you could have green sun for uh, Collector Roof. Yeah, I just... I'm. I I see the collector if he just dying to the broadside bomb of gears when the token gets made. Oh sure, that's so fair. that that's I fair. didn't yeah I, I didn't think it was worth doing that. Yeah, I, just kind of accept the consequences. I think you're definitely right. Um, you know, I'm just not thinking right now because like I my, in my defense <laughs> I'm works. somewhat tired from a, a day at Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds awesome. That sounds like a good time. Uh, anyway, so they cast a Rabble Master, uh, get the token lined up, and go for combat here. I don't declare any blocks because it's not anywhere near lethal, so I can just kind of take this damage. And again, getting lucky here, them not actually using broadside in any manner whatsoever, which allowed me to untap. And put together a great Sun Cena for eight. And okay, yeah, I think um, you know if we bring fair here, right? Uh, this game, there's, there's there's definitely an asterisk. Yeah, there's definitely an asterisk here, uh, and yeah, I don't know. I didn't want to like, I didn't want to tell them in the heat of the moment or anything. Like, I didn't want, I didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I I feel you on that. But I, I, I think it's like one of those things run. where uh, you won't, they won't make that mistake again, I think. Right, exactly. Broadside is definitely worth activating a lot more often. Um, it's the lesson here, and uh, we'll go into game two really quick. Um, I kept a pretty solid hand here, I think. Just very basic. Um... And they start with a Rabble Master. I think I would be tempted to mulligan only because we don't have anything like kind of fast. And I'm a little scared of their nudge draws. I guess so. I I don't know. It, it's hard for me to throw a hand away a hand that's like reasonable like this, I guess. Yeah, it, it definitely uh, plays magic and like I would probably keep this against almost any other fair deck. Yeah. Maybe maybe it was not correct to do that, but uh, 
we do unfortunately bottom the stuff out here, but I think we end up taking a higher, I want to say. Yeah, I think uh, I would probably, since we already have the higher in hand and the green sun, I'd probably take the reclaimer because um, it's the most unique effect. I but see. Hierarch's not I, bad, huh? Yeah, I guess I took Hierarch because I just wanted more mana uh, on the table faster to do a more broken faster. Sure, like, that, that's reasonable. I think that was the reasoning behind my decision there. We did top deck Natural Order, which was really good. Uh, and then we were able to just kind of spew uh, some creatures and set up basically for the kill. Uh, they do attack. I put a blocker there because I'm trying to think of why. I, I guess because we still had lethal and I didn't want to get surprised by anything. I so I, I think this hand strong. is is what um I would probably default to against like traditional Stompy uh, Moon Stompy deck, where we know we have the natural order next turn. I think we can probably actually hold back a little bit. I mean, we lose to broadside in that scenario, but I probably play like two creatures or have two creatures at most on on board to at least guarantee uh, a turn three natural order for yeah. Traxa. The the thing here is I. Uh, you're a little bit walking into uh, <coughs> pyrokinesis is, is my only fear, but if they don't have it, they don't have it. That's certainly enough they didn't. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I did board out Crater Hoof, but they scooped to the natural order on the stack. I mean, I don't think they're being attractive for, for what it's worth either. Yeah, so. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so that was round one versus Turbo Mexus. Again, giant asterisk here. I think things would have been, at least, uh, there would have been a game three, you know, if, uh, Broadside Bomb Gears had a few more activations. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll go to round two, where we played against Turbo Mexus again. This time in three games. Uh, this time it was three games versus okay. Turbo Mexus. Uh, we win the die roll, and I keep this hand. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, this is a pretty solid hand. Where are you taking? I mean, we we take the the card that the deck's named after, right? <laughs> oh man, you're right. <laughs> We have our boy uh, Romario here in, in chat. Nice to see you. Hi, Eternal Magic, by the way. How's it going? Hey, Romario. What's going on? Uh, so they go Ancient Tomb Pass. We're a little nervous, but throw out some guys and hold up endurance. Time being. They show us. A Rabble Master. Keep the time of flash and turns. <laughs> Just take that out. And draw the natural order. It's just that easy. Sometimes, uh, you know, the deck decides it's our day, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is one of those games where it's just like, you had it all. That, that one is uh, easy mode. No, yeah, no asterisk exactly. there, but it's pretty nice. Test control will affect your card choices, if at all. I don't um, hey, Seth, like, uh, 11, I don't know, 11, 11 I guess. Uh, my thought on that is, I don't know how many decks actually will be playing that card. Not because it's good, not good, but it's just in some weird colors that, um, I think if you're a control deck, you, right, you want to have Beanstalk in your deck. Uh, and I'm, I don't see that card really seeing play in, like, a tempo deck. So, I, I just... I wonder how many decks actually play, and uh, I I personally have not considered any changes because of it because I just am a little skeptical of what how, how many decks are going to play it personally. All right, yeah. Uh, well, let's go into game two versus Turbo Mexus here. 
Um, uh, obviously, not very capable. <laughs> no. Great hand. Um, I do you think I'd just put back a fetch line here. Uh, I would, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh wait. Yeah. Uh, we changed the fetch line now for some. But okay. our hand loses to Blood Moon here, but that's just part of the price of playing this matchup. Yeah. So they did play a Cavern on Goblin, so we do get to Thoughtseize here. Uh, it was Name Sticker Goblin, Shatter Skull Goblin Matron. City, City Cavern. So I took Name Sticker. Though, I think, in hindsight, thinking about how this matchup played from here, since we didn't have stuff out, maybe it was actually better to take the Matron than just, like, answer this whenever it comes down. Um, I think taking Sticker is, is correct. Because, okay. Because um, you're slowing their deck down, and Matron is... Like, the, the more turns we get, I think the more we're favored. So, interestingly enough, I think the reason I thought this is because this played out a lot differently, which was, um, uh, let's see what happened here. Oh, yeah, so they play their second cavern, and they top deck a uh, two-drop guy, battle cry goblin, last turn. <coughs> um... So we get a couple of reclaimers down and send it back their way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they play the Matron here off City, I think. And now they're going to get Luxus because they have another City. Um, so that's kind of why I thought, oh, maybe I should have, you know, taken the Matron and then have the solid answer to this still. Versus now they have Muxus and I can't really do anything about it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I, it's that's, yeah, it's important. Like Matt's uh, Mots here um, pointed out, where sometimes you have to think about how their hand plays out, and I think they're on the hard cast Muxus plan regardless. If we take the name sticker Goblin, so I think that's reasonable. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, it, it, it kind of hit me after the fact. I just saw a name sticker Goblin and I jumped because, you know, that's the card that, you know, usually breaks the deck wide open and the card we hate to see. So it just kind of, like, I just kind of got reacted that way. Um, I'm not sure that this is correct either in hindsight. I probably should have played Cradle... And held up double activation just to get these guys online faster. Um, uh, yeah, I think that def definitely this is the first uh, pretty yeah. relevant misplay because you hold cradle and I think you leave one reclaimer back and you like dig for gas right with mortuary. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It, right now I'm just like for some reason trying to set up a giant like green sun. I'm hoping top deck instead of. Uh, playing Reclaimer to its strengths. Uh, I got too aggressive there. Um, so that was too bad. And anyway, here's Muxus with two Rival Masters. And now things are getting out of control a little bit. Um, again, probably shouldn't have sent the Reclaimers to begin with. Uh, now... Casting stuff out on this guy, and I think for what it's worth, I would have snuffed out Rabble Mass at the previous turn. Yeah, and I just kind of scooped to that broadside anyway, so yeah, that's uh, there is definitely uh, some errors there for sure, uh, which is unfortunate, but you know, we live and we learn. No, I think, uh, yeah, as long as you got game three and you don't repeat the mistake in the future, I think you're all good, right? I think uh, so. Regarding think the, so. Uh, you know, pest control, yeah, I think, I think it's one of those things where if you're not comfortable playing around, um, like, engineer explosives or, or these, like, uh, deed... It, Obviously, if you don't know about it and it's in a deck that's normally not in, it's going to be hard to play around. But if it's known, it's one of those things where I personally think it's not hard to play around if you know about it. 
Right. Well, anyway, we're going into game three, uh, and we keep a nice, solid hand here, I think. Yeah. I think this is, like, fine. <coughs> so, they mold six, which obviously makes Thoughtseize a little bit better. Um, and now enter the tank with me, because I definitely spent a while in the tank here. Um, I think what I took is worked out fine for the situation. I'm not sure it was ultimately correct in the end, but uh, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this thought season. Um, they're going to be able to Rabble Master regardless. And I right. think we're, we want to be able to just flood board. So I probably take the Fury here. Cool. Awesome. That's where I arrived as well. Uh, my other big consideration for this hand is Chromox, just because Simeon Spirit Guide is a one time use. Uh, so, you know, uh, they wouldn't have a permanent red source after that. Uh, but again, I think the threat of Fury. It's just too a little too daunting for what we want to be doing. Yeah, um, I think the thing is, is like words, our so. hand has a slower clock, right? Like we're we're not gonna presumably cast natural order anytime soon outside of a top deck. So I think we have to hope we get lucky and top deck removal. You know what I mean? Right. So we take the fury. Who we send the deck? And they play the Rabble Master, as expected. So, Rabble, Chromoxy. Not to mention the line that we took still rewards us if we do net tap, top deck natural order. True, true. Uh, and so I take this turn to play a couple of Pyrex. Um I think if it were me there, I'd probably take the Cradle and just not play around Moon Effects because... I, like, in our deck, we're not playing around top deck because we don't have permission anyways. Um, I think you, you just hope that your mana acceleration outpaces their Rebel Master uh, if it gets to that point. Gotcha. Uh, so they attack here in the blocks. We take a bunch of damage. They sack off a goblin to kill a noble and send it back. Um, at which point... It looks pretty bad right now, to be honest. But I think you're probably going to top pick a snuff out, maybe? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we top deck Natural Order because that's what the deck does sometimes. And I uh, flip on the Atraxa here, which finds me a Force of Despair, another Natural Order, a Guy's Cradle, and an Ignoble Hierarch. Uh, is what I end up taking. Oh wait, no. I swap out... Oh, I guess I'm swapping out the Cradle for a Dryad Arbor. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably fine. I think the only thing I would do differently is, I know we're going to try to have the Attractor go the difference, so I may just have like Reclaimers just to play defense, if anything. I see. But not terribly, like, bad or anything. Yeah, so check this out. Uh, so on the next turn, my opponent plays a, another Goblin Rap, or another Broadside. I wait for combat, wait for the token to enter, and then I cast Force of Despair for combat. Nice. Um, so it takes out the broadside that just came down and the one token. Now we have an attack here. How are you blocking? Uh, I'm double blocking the broadside. Add away, add away. <laughs> Easy. That's the only so way they, we lose, in my opinion. Yeah, they order the blocks to obviously take out the Atraxa, but it's like, whatever, we just gained a bunch of life. You're down to a goblin token, uh, and we have another natural order. So I just kind of spew the board, cast the natural order, grab the hoof, do some early damage, uh, put him to eight. Then tap with a rebel master, attack back, put me to 11. 
uh, draw once upon a time. So I cast it, grab a reclaimer, and play a fetch attack for five. Sorry, I couldn't time so move a little fast there. Um, so here the there was... actually was relevant, so that's kind of nice, nice to see. Yeah. Uh... Oh, yeah. I guess I did put Crater Hoof back in for this. I was kind of like, I know the guide says cut it, but I, there are just so, some situations where I feel like I could just easily win the game with it still in the deck, and so I ended up cutting one of the mortuaries. Because mm -hmm. uh, the mortuary is just a little slow in this matchup. Or, I, I don't know. Hold on, what did I cut? You said board. Uh, yeah, I cut the grizz. The grizz check the fog. Yeah, that makes sense, Mott. Oh. Yeah, oops. Okay, well, anyway. Um, so they play Battlecry Goblin into a land to activate the Battlecry Goblin. Uh, make a bunch of power and attack. At which point... <laughs> uh, they scooped, actually, right here. I didn't have to do the thing where, you know, we make the Reclaimers big and do the good blocks and then attack back for lethal. Mm -hmm. So that's our game. Yeah. Uh, round three. Uh, four color Doomsday. Didn't really realize it was Doomsday until late game one, but you know. Uh, our opponent is known for playing Grixis control lists a lot, I think. So, <coughs> anyway, hold on. I should go back and explain. Uh, okay, so if you know, if you think you're up against Grixis Control, are you keeping this? Uh, I don't think I'm keeping this unless it's a, I know they're on uh, a graveyard deck. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. I was sitting here like, this hand has spells and lands, but it's just slow and kind of weird. It doesn't really do anything. So I did ship it back to see this. Yeah, this is like which, way better, right? Yeah, way better. And I put back Greater Hoof, obviously. Because it's free. Um, so Tropical Island into Ponder. We draw a Dryad Arbor. Fetch of a forest and once upon a time. Actually, in the previous game, there's an argument. I have to look back. There's a there's an argument to just not block with the tracks as well if it's not lethal. But I, I'd have to check the map or how much it was. It probably was, to be honest. It was like lethal if I let it through. I do know that. I knew I had to block in some manner when I was like going over it and like painstaking the last night. Um. <laughs> Anyway, uh, off this once upon a time, I think I grabbed Cradle. Uh huh. Uh, yep. Actually, small um, nitpick. I th they, they, these are the scenarios where, because you have the black card already in hand, I probably would take the chance and just fetch by you. Oh. Right? Yeah, I, I guess yeah. so. Say that again? Yeah, I, I probably should have. But I played, I played too safe because this looked like a rug delver opening on mm -hmm. my opponent's part. No, that's fair. I think I think I would take just the chance that it gets wasteland because. <coughs> I mean, yeah, because I'm putting Arbor into play anyway. I guess. Anyway, uh, opponent goes blue. Delta and passes back. Yeah, at this point, I'm like, oh, it's probably a combo deck. Yeah, I just wasn't getting that vibe. Like, again, I could I could also see this as, like, a, a standoff, like, control turn. 
I don't know. So, but they should be, they should probably bowmaster to kill the dork, right? I think um, I think it's a mistake when players don't bolt the bird. And then obviously LED comes down and it's like, oh, okay, what's going on here? Um, and come find out it's uh, a four color doomsday list and. We're like very thankful that this endurance is here, but yeah, kind of kicking ourselves over the uh, lack of Bayou at this point. It's like the greatest feeling where uh, we open with endurance and just like we keep the hand anyways, but they ra random happen randomly happen to be like reanimated or something or doomsday. Yeah, so they do brainstorm into their pile. And then cast a thought seize, at which point I respond with an endurance. Um, and I put their stuff back on bottom. They take green sun, falling to seven. Uh, so we draw here. And I'll just play stuff out. Attack for four, holding back Reclaimer, just in case. It doesn't change the clock at all. I, I think there's merit to attack with the Reclaimer there because the difference between three and two is relevant in this matchup because of Street Reef. Oh! Ooh, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely a misplay on my part, then. Oops, okay. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> our opponent considers and puts Teferi in the yard, cycles out, edge of bottom, plays a lane, fetches down to two, uh, and doesn't find anything, and then concedes. Mm, it seems like their pile was not flexible enough to, to essentially cast the, um, the Oracle without LED is my guess. Or they, that, it seemed like they screwed up the pile. Yeah, I again, I think I just kind of lucked out here. Uh, and I do especially now feel <laughs> bad that I didn't swing with the Reclaimer there. Oh. I, I think the, the Reclaimer swing, uh, there's like some merits if you like, think that they have some reanimation spell or, or whatever, like an earth, like the old school piles. But um, I think the bigger uh, takeaway, to be honest, is the uh, the Mesmeric Fiend, or if you draw a, a Gris Hand, I think you just price yourself into fetching Bayou early. And then if they have it, they have it. You know what I mean? You don't want to just like preemptively lock yourself out of a card. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I, I think that's, anyway. to be honest, the bigger takeaway than, you know, missing the one point of damage. So uh, we open this hand and get really excited about it because it's pretty sick. Yeah, this hand is like solid. I, I think I keep any Thoughtseize hand to be honest. Yeah, any, any good old Thoughtseize hand. So they pondered, uh, did not shuffle. Um, I, it came to my mind as I was putting it on the stack that I probably should have um, uh, easy ones upon a time here. Uh, I should have probably just played the hierarchy I got off the once upon a time here into the obvious days, but uh, I got it. I got greedy and just jam foxies anyway. So, um, for what it's worth, I actually think I would make the same play because. The days does set your opponent back as well. For what it... Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does set them back in development. I do always appreciate that when that happens. So, and, and also, there's a, just a chance that they just you know, if you don't do that, they're just gonna go dark ritual doomsday next turn, and you just feel silly for not casting thoughtsies. Yeah, and like also, yeah, the four color list it does feel like that. Uh, Dark Ritual Doomsday is really like the way that they're going to do it the most consistently just because of how odd the meta base seems, like with the Tropical Island. And, you know, so, so Mott's uh, in chat brings up an interesting idea here. The thing is that I feel like the piles that they make often can beat Endurance, but 
I guess maybe if you have Endurance plus Snuff Out, maybe you want them to uh, to go for it, and then they, it's hard for them to beat both. So that there's like I, I that's an interesting. Uh, interesting. I never thought about it like here. that. Anyway, uh, they decide to play a fetch land, grab a tundra, ponder, and then shuffle off the ponder. <coughs> um, so notably, we know that Underground Sea is still in hand. Uh, we go ahead and just kind of thin the deck and play a few mana donks, leaving the Endurance Shields down, just because, again, I don't know, like... It seems unlikely that they would untap and dark red into Doomsday here because they would have just done that last turn, but instead they had developed that Tundra and gone Ponder, so it just kind of felt like shields were down. So so I think um Or not shields, but rather I, the I think I would not have played the second noble for for the the first reason obviously is that that is for the endurance pitch. Uh, but ignore that for a second. I, I kind of agree with you that they're unlikely to go for it, which would, you know, not playing around anything. So the shields down is not that bad. The thing, yeah, Moths just brought up is I think having the fetch available for the dig is way more important. So uh, it's more so that than the, just, just the shields down. Yeah, I think one thing I'm having a hard time of letting go is just like, developing the most available mana to do the most broken thing on the next turn like because the way yeah i mean here it makes sense because if i had just not played the noble hierarch i could still untap and cast natural order if i drew it i guess um there's no difference between four and five mana uh for from like a top deck perspective um, yeah, the mana, the mana definitely can matter in some situations where maybe you don't dig, but I think here, like you mentioned, um, we're probably slamming natural order regardless, and we just want to find either more disruption or, or payoff, right, with the fetch land, and I think given that the number of turns, um, given that the number of turns in this matchup uh, is condensed, I think you definitely want to maximize your chances of drawing a relevant card the following turn instead of optimizing for mana when you don't have a payoff in hand. Yeah, I think that's completely fair. Uh, I think that's a completely fair criticism and uh, definitely something I can mind for the future. Uh, but again, yeah, I kind of went off the, the, old her the, the older heuristic of just like, Developing the most mana available and getting the sense that because of my opponent's actions on turn two, that I could leave the pitch cast out of it, and that was like a major part of the equation. But mm -hmm. yeah, 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 totally makes sense. Uh, what you're saying, absolutely. So, so yeah, so I I think um, Mots brings up an interesting thing. Both fetches. Uh, just scry. I think for me, this kind of matchup, I board out one more terrain. Sounds like Matt, Mots might not be doing that, but that's maybe food for thought. I, I bring out. I, I did board out one. Yeah, yeah I board out one, one just because I just think the likelihood scenario where the second one matters is probably low. Anyway, so uh, moving <coughs> on. We did draw another fetch land, so now we're ready to go fetch the land that saves Cradle Control. <laughs> uh, and now we're also holding up our cast endurance, so lots of lots of interaction up and about right now. Um, they cycle Lori Reveal to go get a tropical island, at which point they do nothing but play said tropical island. So we fetch up the land that saves Cradle Control. Uh, and dump that Verdant Catacombs right in the graveyard. Um, and draw a Cradle. So, you know, more mana, less problems, or more problems. I think but, the uh, version that you're playing against also wants to put a Teferi into play. Uh, that oh, yeah, it does. 
Yeah, I think that's their way of beating like snuff out and endurance. So a little, your hands a little bit flooding out, but you know that's the price we pay with playing, you know, the high land count, which, you know, I'm more than willing to you know accept these floods every once in a while. Alright, so we grab a Dryad Arbor here, <coughs> and hope to draw something good, other endurance, so plenty of those to go around. I think this Dryad Arbor gets Swords to Flash here, which is interesting. Um, so, that happens. Uh, Teferi, I probably should have cast endurance there uh in hindsight my my gut feeling is and i've done this myself multiple times, you probably just click through it right yeah i kind of clicked through it and then i was like oh god like wait hold on if i put the endurance down then i like force the minus basically right and get to fairy dead now i've left myself in a situation where they can uptake kind of keep it alive and now i kind of have to like tempo negatively like play this on my main phase to threaten to ferry back down to a place where yeah I I, I, i've definitely been there many a times where i just like click through something it's just like oh shoot feels so bad uh we fire off the thought sees oh shit i should have left that reveal longer i did take the dark ritual here but the hand was Dark Ray, Edge of Autumn, Force of Will, another Teferi, and an LED. The thought process here was that Dark Ritual was the only way that they were ever going to cast you today. Um, and we just want to kind of keep them on like uh, a fair plan where their their fair plan is just horrible, right? Like they, it's just they don't want to be doing that. Uh, and I can probably chase out this force of will with one of these endurances. Um was the thought. So uh I took Dark Ray. I think uh, uh I forget what what is the not a cast version of Edge of Autumn? It it rapid grows, right? Yeah, if you control for a few basic or lands, search for a basic put on a battlefield tab. Yeah, I I think I'm not sure I would take Dark Ritual only because I think they can edge for a swamp. But then even then, even then they only have two black sources, right? It's not three. Oh, you're, so. you're, you're right, you're right. You're right. I, I yeah, thought there was yeah. two on the field. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's kind of why I went after the ritual. And then I went to cast the Endurance, which to plan did meet Force of Will and Teferi getting out of hand, leaving them with LED edge bottom. Uh, and at that point, I felt confident enough to just go ahead and shields down a little bit and play this endurance, not targeting anybody just because I didn't want to give them back anything necessarily. Um, and then I put to ferry down to three here. Uh, or no, I think I just attacked. I attacked my opponent. I just said, you can go to six with to ferry, that's fine get it dead eventually um they draw an oracle and cast it uh put a card on their top of their library and close to fairy um <clears throat> at which point uh things are getting weird because we just are like okay the fairy still needs to die obviously thousands of oracles here to block you know what just get it out of the way just, we're gonna play the fair game and just kind of hope it works out. Uh, so we attack to fairy down with one. They brainstorm, obviously leaving, having left it on top of Faust's Oracle. Uh, plus one here and send it back to us. We draw another endurance and I attack the fairy, which unfortunately we get plowed. Uh, and I cast another Endurance, just because the Hierarchs are not going to be able to kill Teferi next turn on their own. Um, and I want to make sure that he went down before a minus uh, when uh, my opponent needs some kind of action. Uh, is the and... reason why you didn't target their Graveyard is you, did, you just didn't want those cards back in their deck? 
Right, yeah. I just didn't want them to shuffle and have access to all this crap again, basically. That's fair. Uh, so we get the ferry off the board here. Set it back over. They cycle out Edge of Autumn, floating a mana, uh, but do nothing and pass back. This is definitely not a normal, I think, Doomsday game. It's weird. It's so weird. Uh, the vibes are just kind of strange, but I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going with it. We grab Dryad Arbor, rip a Thought Seize. Ooh. Unfortunately, they have Veil, uh, which felt really bad. Um, we attack them for five, put them to six. Uh, send it back over. They send it back to us. We cast Natural Order, and they Dark Rate out of Force of Will. Um, because if they all cast Force of Will, they die to Endurance. But this doesn't really matter anyway, because you can't do it stay at one life. So right. they're, they're virtually dead at this point. Yeah. We put them to one, pass, knowing that they probably can't do anything. They ponder, and then they scoop. So well, that's, think, uh, that's Doomsday. I think we ran somewhat hot there with the, the Endurance top decks. Uh, I think you navigated the the strange game. I'll put it that way, or the non uh, non traditional Doomsday matchup. Uh, you know, fairly well there. Yeah. But uh, now we go up against the the boogeyman of the format, Blue Black Scanator, and I think this is going to be educational for everybody because uh, it doesn't end well. Um, and that's always an opportunity to learn. So let's go ahead and find out what's going on. Uh, this is our game one hand. Pretty good. Yeah, that's as I good think. as it's going to get outside of the tap land. Yeah. Uh, so we grab a forest and deploy higher and pass it back. Our opponent plays blue to delta and pass back to us. Play another noble into uh, a reclaimer, which gets force of will, thankfully, because that's the card that we care less about resolving. Uh, we care about this one resolving a little more. Yeah, so, I also like that you were, uh, you know, you're clean with the sequencing here, playing around the days. Yeah, that was uh, why we did like speed up the cradle before we played the reflamer. So, okay. I know that's something that uh, you've don't haven't done with consistency in the past. So that's nice to see it here. Yeah, in terms yeah. of getting a little bit uh, sloppy, you know what I mean? Definitely, definitely, I think so. Oh, looks like we got another raid. Thank you, Wonder Boy, for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so the Bowmaster is down at Ignoble Hierarch, which isn't really the end of the world. We were kind of hoping for this just because, again, we're going to untap it. What's their, uh, what did they pitch to the Greek? Security. They pitched, oh, oh no, they, they didn't the pitch anything. They just, uh, yeah, under okay. city. Um, so, yeah, they pass back to us. We play they will out dump this fiend artisan because we're casting natural order anyway um and make our artisan a little bigger the natural order resolves we put a track so on the field uh we select some cards so that's a heuristic that i think uh players might not be as um familiar with i think in general you want your search effect before the surveil because in case you want to put the surveil on top right like if the natural order doesn't resolve there that may change your decision with the, the surveil oh interesting yeah i didn't think about that but okay. it's like i said it's, it's one of those things where you make the mistake once and you probably don't make it like many times after that all right well Fiendarsen goes <coughs> out and kills an orc army. They send it back. They brace it, or they brainstorm into troll. It's up around seeing the ponder. Dig, 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 dig. 
we're just going to go ahead and uh, cast a bunch of things. Because why not? It's fun. Aren't you having fun? I don't think it mattered too much here, but you might have had like a, a cradle hoof in play there. Uh, I it did. I was doing the math on that, and I don't think there was a way that that happens at all. Uh, I can go back through it here in a moment if you want. No, you don't have but... to. The, the only thing is like the um, what's it call it the. Because the, the green sun ramps one, but I don't, I don't, I mean, you're pretty ahead anyway, so I, I think it's natural to maybe like, sometimes you can take off the foot off the gas pedal too. Like here, we're miles ahead. Yep. So pretty nice, pretty clean game one. I mean, not the cleanest maybe, but it worked out. <coughs> um, game two. Let's take a look. Oh, you kept in uh, Traxa. Uh, that's what the board plan said, right? Hold on, let me pull it up. Yeah, it says cut one collector if you cut one crater of behemoth. Bring in one canoptic serap swarm and one oh, fairy. Oh, I, I think um, so. So it gets a little confusing in my cyborg guide. There's a section that says you be. The Demir scam, right? Like that refers to the non Entomb versions. There's a section that has a uh, Demir reanimator, which is what this matchup is about. Oh shit! Oops. But you know, better better we learn that now, right? In, 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 instead of like during the showcase. Oh, uh, you know what? This explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'm this, glad you got there anyway. This... I mean, yeah, like, not in this match, obviously, but I got there. Anyway, so I looked at this hand, and I thought to myself, if I was rolling to six and this Atraxa wasn't here, these cards are all pretty. I think the Atraxa is actually really slow in this matchup, for what it's worth. Hold up, wait. But that does explain why... Uh, you do have it coming in uh, against Blue Black Reanimator. I do, but it's not because it's, I think it's good. It's just because it's better than the other stuff I would play. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, this is awkward. Anyway, uh, it feels like all a wash now. But um, I kept this anyway because it tracks to convince you endurance, blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. Who cares? Uh, so... Please ponder. Griefs me. Takes the endurance. Passes back. Uh, grab a forest. Take a look at the top. I think I just take the universe in here. Um, <coughs> did we wrong? No, I took a land. Okay. That's probably fine. Bow Masters, shoot sound noble. Draw natural Ooh. order. So we just kind of sad about that because we boarded out the crater hoof, of course. Yeah, so, so. Um, Mots is kind of uh, bringing up the elephant in the room. I think that given you know, you're, you're playing against Reanimator there, I'd probably run the Reclaimer into days. And play, try to play defense. Mm. But yeah, because um, I I'm I think 
I'm okay with them dazing my reclaimer. I think I would rather not lose if they have an entomb or digging for entomb into reanimation spell hand. Yeah, I think I autopiloted out the noble heart under the assumption that I wanted it dazed and kind of tunnel visioned on that. No, also in your defense, I will say like at this point, it's almost like getting close to 11 o'clock p.m. Pacific time already. And uh, a grandpa like me would probably just, like, be half asleep, right? Yeah, a little bit of that. And then also, again, I have apparently boarded completely incorrectly. And I'm not thinking... And I'm thinking about it from just a scam perspective versus not giving enough consideration towards the graveyard. Yeah, so, so I think... I, I think, think that's there were the, the big reasons, uh, macro, but... um, the interesting macro wise, right? Like, I think there's some discussion about like, are they really a combo deck or is this like really a, a tempo deck with a combo finish? I think I treat their deck as a combo deck because that's probably the part that scares me. I think if they're just trying to play a fair game against me, they're probably gonna lose. But that's right, yeah, saying. because we're just inherently like built to kind of beat up on tempo decks from the get-go so and yeah again any kind of fair strategy we're just we're well positioned in yeah uh i feel like if i did have the mindset where i was approaching this like combo last night i absolutely would have gone reclaimer i'm turning yeah the other uh, thing is i want to highlight this mods is here when mods top aided like you know a month ago almost exactly to this day he beat like some version of days wasting like five different times that day. So like, I think we are pretty well positioned under normal circumstances to beat this kind of deck. Yeah, exactly. I think again, I just completely misevaluated the matchup, and I had I was referring to kind of the wrong. I think I think set the good, of lines. I think the, the 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 nice thing is like from a teaching uh i guess perspective or like learning perspective i think it's good because everybody knows like from a macro standpoint i think you have a pretty good feel for this deck and uh i, I think it, it's good to to see like you know going through your, your thought process too like even you can mis evaluate a, a matchup for instance for some well, people like just picking up the deck which i think is a one of the yeah. harder if not the hardest deck in legacy it also makes me feel a shit ton better. I'm going to be real with you because last night after I lost it, I was sitting there thinking, this is a matchup I feel like I should be well hurt, like I should be well built for and ready to combat. Why did I lose? And now, now that like it's coming to light, all this stuff, uh, it definitely makes me feel better, and I can't wait to play the matchup again next time. Uh, the the good thing is also, right, right? Um, it also means you have actually more margin for error because, like, there's 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 room where f to to even further optimize if that makes sense. So that's almost yeah, a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, glad we learned that. Um, <coughs> ponder, reanimate grief. Sure, take whatever you want. I guess uh, they take the attracts. Uh, don't have three animate, thankfully, so we just kind of dodge that bullet. We draw another natural order. It's all bad. Um, we play a canoptic, and we target ourselves to get more insects. Uh, not something that I wanted to do, but it wasn't going to target anything over there. So... I think if it were me, I would have played that kind of differently. Um, I think I would have end stepped uh, instead of getting Arbor, I would have did, dug for uh, something relevant and got the swarm. And then, assuming you didn't make that play and you still made the Arbor play, I probably would hold up uh, Reclaimer because if my opponent top decks Bog, we or it's, let's just say they go days into Bog and we probably just lose, right? Mm -hmm. Or forced into yeah. Bog, uh, into reanimation, right? Right. Yeah, I don't know. It all felt bad. Uh, 
So they end up attacking. I put Reclaimer in front of Orc Army. They end up brainstorming to try to find another Orcish Spellmasters and do so successfully, which is really bad for us. Uh, left the Flyers in play, so I played Noble and cast Natural Order and got a Fiend Artisan to kind of try to hold the ground a little bit better while I got some damage in, in the air. Uh, then two for Atraxa and Animate Dead, and the game starts to get away from us. Uh, and yeah, it just kind of ends badly from here. They wasteland our cradle, and I scoop it up, so. Um, yeah, unfortunate. Game three. Uh, I think it's a good hand. Yeah, this is like a, uh, I don't know about snacky, but you definitely keep. Yeah, I did keep my opponent mold to six. Uh, I fetched out a forest and cast once upon a time, find uh, mana dogs and lands, so I took. Noble and cast it. They play an underground sea and pass turn back. Uh, we play an ignoble and play a mortuary uh, to see that there's a bayou, which we've been. Uh, leaving up the mana to play around days should we need to endurance. Um, if it were me, I would probably attack because if you leave the, the higher up, it almost telegraphs you have something, right? Yeah, I did kind of consider that as well. They drew Wasteland, but don't use it immediately and pass back. Uh, I cast it once upon a time just to kind of see what's going on here. Yeah, I, I think um, Moth brings up the play that I probably would have made too. I think given that I'm ahead on Temple, if they want to Wasteland and essentially like kind of do nothing on their turn, I'm okay with that. But I, w I would have played the Cradle plus once there and just like dig for Reclaimer or something or, or, or Fiend Artisan. Gotcha. I think here... Ooh... Interesting. Oh yeah, I took another cradle because I wanted to play around wasteland um, and just kind of deploy these endurances. I felt, I honestly felt pretty ahead here at this moment in time. Um, but so they end up casting grief, which we just kind of have to let happen. And at the end of their turn, I ended up endurancing them. Find a fiend artisan. It's weird that they didn't take the wasteland. It's all it's like they're telegraphing uh, bowmasters, in my opinion. The swim with endurance, put them down to fifteen. Kind of just waiting. So, they so just... that sequence there, if it were me, uh, two different things. Um, I'd probably take the Artisan, because I'm not afraid of Wasteland. Like, the thing about Wasteland is Reclaimer beats it, and Artisan can find a Reclaimer. Or, in this case, you have the Soulless Jailer, right? You can just, like, lock them out. Um, yeah... So I, I think I definitely take the artisan there and cast it. Uh, I think given that you already did that, I don't think they're. I mean, we're at the end of the day. I think we're a combo deck, and I would have just slammed the natural order, right? Make them have it. I guess so. I probably played that way too conservatively, and it cost me a lot, fortunately. The good thing is you still won the challenge. So it's uh it's almost like the best of both worlds, right? 
Yeah, learn a lot, and then. So here you get your own attracts, which is neat. I was trying to bait out Force of Will with this great set for one. Um, I think we're the, well, it depends. I think if we, given how we boarded, I still think we are the control, personally. I think we're the, the control, they're the beat down. In, yeah, we're playing hard control, in my opinion, in, the, in this strategy. So, trade off of Traxxas, they animated my Traxxas. Kind of see where this is going. I think this is one of those things where, like, I don't know how much you've played this matchup. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah, I, I think if you played this matchup more, I, you probably would have won. Uh, I think it's more unfamiliarity because you have been out of legacy for a little bit. And I think where Mario and Mott's kind of bring up the same thing, right? Like that I was going to mention. You don't really want the attraction to go to the graveyard there because you, you know that the trigger already hit a reanimation spell, right? Uh, I don't think they did keep a reanimation spell. Even if it didn't, like period. they could easily cantrip for one because they replenished sure. already, right? Yeah, that's fair. So uh, I think, yeah, like I said, I think these are the type of mistakes you probably only make the first time. And I, I, I highly doubt it would happen again as far as a, from a macro perspective, I think in these way, Wasteland Days decks, I don't think you would make the same macro mistake again. I think where I see people make macro mistakes is against like these control decks. Yeah, so... Mats kind of brings up what I'm bringing, right? Where, like, I think you probably are winning that game. But, again, this is the type of mistake that probably only happens once, right? Hopefully. Yeah, I, I think it's just... Yeah, it was just sloppy on my end. But, I like I said, the, uh, the upside is... You know, you really see the power level of the deck, though, right? Like... There's still room for growth, if that makes sense. It's not like you played, you know, got every ounce out. Like there's, you can still, uh, you can yeah. still get more out of the juice, so to speak. Yeah. All right. yeah. I think we can go to the next game. It's, it, we're pretty think, behind from here. Yeah, I think we just threw it away. So, all right, up against Painter now. Um, and it's fine, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I think I would keep. I think one thing that um, I've noticed, Kern, is, uh, and this is from the exercise we've done on Discord, but I I tend to think your keeps and uh, non keeps are pretty solid for what it's worth. I think. I know some other players who have a harder time with those kind of things, but I think for the most part, you, you're okay there. Yeah, I, that does feel good. I, yeah, I feel like the hand evaluation is okay, so. One heuristic uh, that does change though, because I, I know the reps haven't been there as much with the, you know, Mortuary is, uh, as a general rule of thumb, we don't really lead with fetch land as much anymore because of Mortuary. I think I would've just played the basic there. This is gotcha. kind of a, uh, a thing that only happens, or that you notice after you play with it a little bit. And uh, Well, um, so my thought here was that because there's one Mortuary in hand, I really only need one fetch land for the other Mortuary at any point anyway, and that getting another land into the graveyard faster would be more helpful. Uh, which is why... I open fetch for us there. Just from a different perspective, I guess. Yeah, I, I think the ability to potentially represent Arbor or Bayou later um, may be more important, if that makes sense. I guess so. I see that, yeah. 
Here we're kind of happy uh, we have the endurance in hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would also play Reclaimer here and not play Scared, right? If they have the Engineer, so be it. Yeah, and I mean, even then, they still need to have another artifact enter play for the Engineer, like, mm -hmm. they, exactly. they alpha mini. You're, they're, they need to have a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. All right, uh, we drew green since Zenith, so we... I don't honestly remember what I did here. What would you do here? Um, this one's kind of tough, right? It's like either hold up reclaimer or green sun for collective. I feel to shut off their um, their acceleration. Right. I think if it would be. Um, well, you live with a fetch first. I think if it were me, we would probably slow down. Uh, yeah, I, I think I would just like hold everything up. There's an argument to be made. We're supposed to um, play the mortuary there and just pass. Hmm. Well, apparently I took it upon myself to do something. And I guess that thing was getting grist. I'm not sure that that is correct, but we're going to go with it, I suppose. Uh, they play Painter and they Pyroblast for Claimer to send an attacker at grist. I just block with Insect. Keep it. I've actually it found grist to be kind of bad in this matchup because... It's it's actually harder to protect than than you would think. Yeah, uh, it does come out in the board plan. I realize, and again, I don't know. I guess I just played on vibes here, and yeah, it could have been could have been better. Uh, so they're well out for the grindstone and my upkeep. Uh, at which point I endurance in response to get the grindstone out of there. Another endurance mortuary out a reclaimer. Turn Noble Hierarchy into a reclaimer, I think. Yeah, so I think um, kind of the example of what we talked about earlier, same thing, right? Uh, you typically, with this new list, uh, it's the, the fetching uh, play patterns, their sequencing matters a lot more. So you, you want to sequence the fetch first again before the, uh, the mortuary trigger. Yeah. But again, like that, that only comes with you have more reps and uh, you had been, you know, on a hiatus, so easy to miss. Uh, so they hit my deck, but we have a turn with endurance here to uh, get all the cards back in the library. It's not permanently fixing the problem, but it's helping. Woohoo! Uh, we draw that, we have four, so I end up getting Collector Rufy, uh, just to try to keep that shut off, but they have Lightning Bolt, oh, wow. so. Okay. So they took game one, I'm assuming, then. Yeah, so that's the end, basically, because I just died to the, uh, the ground stone, so. Yeah, uh, I think passing turn ultimately would have been better there. Uh, and just kind of leaving the fetch up for the ground mortuary, leaving the endurance option up, and also leaving the... I think one heuristic that could help uh, 
you know, anybody who's watching that's not sure, uh, when in doubt, if you don't have Cradle, that's probably the correct play to hold up Reclaimer. Yeah. So... <clears throat> leave your options open. Game two, uh, we open with this hand and keep it. Um, I know that it's a little four drop heavy, but uh, I mean, we have ramp on turn one and <coughs> natural order into Atraxa is just pretty strong. Do you? So. Um, I think I probably would mold this hand, but natural order is just so strong in the matchup that I, I, I see why you kept. Yeah, and I mean, again, I saw a turn one ramp spell with it, and I think that's what ultimately drove me to that decision to keep. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we get met by Bolt, but we do draw Green Sun again, so we are able to set up Drive Arbor and hold the fetch up for March. Uh, um, I would... Pause. So why are you trying to hold the fetch up for March again? I'm trying to hit fourth land drop so that I can resolve natural order. Oh, I see. Um... I think if it were me, I play the reclaimer, and then because they're gonna because if they have a removal spell, they're gonna bolt your your arbor, and you're gonna be set back pretty far. I'd rather your opponent bolt the reclaimer. We still potentially cast natural order next turn. I see. Okay. Yeah, that would have been better, I guess. So we fetch, find mortuary, sea green sun zenith. Uh, yeah, now your play makes even more sense because I'm kind of priced into putting this into the graveyard. Yeah, I, I think you have to. Order. I think you're all in it on natural order now. You have to bin that. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I think in hindsight, you're absolutely correct. But unfortunately, we missed anyway, and so we have to put a few things out. But they're pretty sizable stats, not too bad. Um, they play a Fable, pass it back. We draw a Pick Your Poison right on time, which takes care of the Fable, and hold up Reclaimer activation for um, uh, the good card. Slash Bochu Gabon, just in case. Um, which actually I think we end up having to do here, because they go for Phyrexian Dragon Engine, which screams to me that their hand is awful. And they're trying to obviously get a better hand, so we react with the bog. And we bog them. And uh, that fizzles the ability. Uh, Shaman connects for two, puts us to 16. We untap. I think we missed land again awkwardly. And also, because both dry arbors are out of the deck, we can't cast this for zero and hold up Reclaimer, which feels really bad. Uh, but, you know, we kind of have to... Oh, I guess I'm electing to cast a reason or something. I think maybe a mana dog here. No, I, I think you gotta, you gotta hold up Cradle, right? Like. Yeah, I think I should have. Oh, wow. No, I just... I guess the I'm other just... thing Mott uh, mentioned, too, is um, there is some consideration, for sure, to eating the Arbor and then growing the Fiend Artisan to block the, you know, the, the their uh, mana bar, so to speak, right? Yeah. Beca because there, there's some, is, there's some um, fear that the engineer is going to get something scary down the road. Yeah, jeez, I could have played that tighter. The, God, well, the good thing is, like I said, there's a. This is all a learning experience for everyone, right? It's just so wild how much cleaner I could have been playing. Also, reclaimer means you can be a little bit sloppy in general because of how good it is. All right. All right hopefully, well, we draw the land here, anyways. There you go. Yeah, we finally did it. We have our natural order. We can win. Uh, I think Hoth comes out in the board plan, so we just went for Atraxa. Yeah, I just don't think they're beating an Atraxa in this matchup. 
Yeah, I I totally see that. And yep, opponent lost, so we will go to game three. Also, shout out to Mots too. Uh, I don't remember if it was this match or Moon Stomp. It was one of those for sure. These mono red decks, where I think it's this one, where if Mots was the one that said, "Yeah, I think we could just board out Hoof and a lot more matchups than we normally do," and sometimes you get screwed because you know you draw the tracks and you don't have a a great second target. But more often than not, I think the ability to reduce our fail rate is uh, is pretty big. Yeah, again, there are some times where I'm like, oh god, if Hoof was in the deck, this game ends this turn, like exactly <laughs> this turn. Mm -hmm. Whereas Atraxas is kind of like, oh no, I gotta pass the turn before I like actually close the door. Uh, but I think more often than not, uh, Atraxas actually does force the concession, and I'm just like overreacting a little bit to like not the instant like thing as I win the game. For sure. The other thing is, like, without Hoof in the deck, um, you don't see when you potentially would have drawn the Hoof in your opener and you're down a card, too, right? Right. Yeah, so... Anyway, uh, game three... This is the hand that I ended up keeping. Uh, just because it had hate, reclaimers, the box sucks, but... What are you do? The Jailer's, like, pretty good, too, for what's worth. Yeah. So we kept it. They go Goblin Walder, send it back to us. Draw another player. Um, I grabbed Forest there. I don't, uh, yeah, I, I think I looked at the before I did fetch the Forest and did remember the fact that uh, not really any black cards come in, so Bayou is not a big deal. Right. So I've, I've cooled off on um, Snuff Out in this matchup because you get just, just you get to just blank their uh, painters for free. And then presumably they, if they name black, for instance, right? Oh, but also, like, I found just killing their stuff is not as good as maybe nuking their yard. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Um, so opponent puts the dragon engine uh, in the yard. And at this point, because, like, I don't really have anything the Green Sun for, eh, I don't know. Like, I could just bog here and play Reclaimer and pass, or I could play Reclaimer and then play Cradle and play Soulless Jailer. But yeah, so that, I, I think yeah. here, if it were me, the you know the old heuristic from you know elves kicks in here right you just want to make the most mana while saving your payoff so i'd probably just go reclaimer into cradle into jailer the second line that you just mentioned okay yeah i think though i ended up not doing that and, and the reason being is because jailer is almost like a bog already right like they they have to answer the jailer before they can you know pull off any shenanigans yeah, I guess my thought was that I wasn't going to get use out of Bog once Jailer was out, out on the table, so I might as well just get the the little bit of use out of it for uh, I can and like put it in on a turn where it's awkward anyway, and then untap with it and move on. But Anyway, so our phone plays great for us into Tainer's Servant, meaning blue. Draw. Alright, what are you doing this turn? I think... There's a decent chance they have removal with one red uh, opened. The Cradle is free, so the, we know that the Reclaimer is going to be, or the Jailer, depending on what you want to do, is free. Um, in hindsight, I don't think... I don't think the third Reclaimer matters there, so I'd probably just go um, Jailer into Cradle into Collector, because I think we're potentially in danger of dying here. What a coinky dink. All right, cool. So that lined up. Like my spidey sense is going off here, like the, the with their setup. 
Yeah, I kind of felt the same way. Um, they do have Bolt for Ufi. They had a Singing Spirit Guide and went Bray as Apprentice here. Um, and then they passed it back. So I, I think this game here, um, it played out a little bit differently because of that turn too, because we're like short mana for like that for what it's worth. Okay. But they had the bulk for the, our our payoff anyways. But there's a chance that we potentially could have saved the green sun, um, because the bulk can hit jailer right. There's a chance we could save the green sun for our tracks uh, later, and and we had to blow it on the collective because we felt like we were potentially going to die. Yeah. I definitely think that, yeah, you're probably right, but it didn't matter. Um, so we hold up double activation. They attack with Thopter, put us 18. Attack Thopter out to find a painter, play another painter named Black with the painter. Uh, and then we start doing some, so we get rid of the bog, we grab the fetch land, we get rid of the fetch land, grab a dry arbor, and then we fetch one more time, and grab the land that saves cradle control, <laughs> to find, try to find something big and explosive, we find a noble hierarch, which we dump. And untap draw, find it once upon a time. Uh, fetch and prem a dry and arbor. And go for a once here. Endurance, endurance, cradle. So we take an endurance. I think there's merit to not fetch the arbor there. I know it deck thins, but. Um... I don't think you want to leave the uh, the arbor maybe susceptible to something like a fury or or, okay. or weird sweeper that they potentially have. Gotcha. Um, this picker poison, in hindsight, I feel was a little bit just like spent because moreover because I did want to like try to eliminate a blocker so I could get my damage in faster. Mm -hmm. Basically, so that's why I expended it. Uh, they did end up sacking the painter on black, and then I endurance, targeting nothing, and I attacked with all the three power guys and put them to 11. Um, just trying to basically close out this game before something happens. Yeah, uh, I think from here, one of the scarier cards is Saga. So I, I definitely hold the pick your poison. Yeah, and it, this is exactly where it comes in, right? Like, this fable is not great for us either. Uh, it would have been nice to have the pick your poison here. Um, uh, That's a so, hell of a draw, though. Yeah, that's a pretty good draw. Um, so we end up attacking. I sent everybody. I'm not sure that this is correct in hindsight, but I did it. Just trying to get people dead or damaged through. Put them to five, play the feeders and pass back. Uh, they red blast the fiend artisan and then a braid the jailer, which was a big bummer. Uh, but again, not really doing anything else here. We draw a natural order. We go to combat. Send everybody. They bring back Bray's apprentice blocks. 
We go to two, we cast natural order post combat, grab a Traxa. That game's basically over. Yep. So that's how we won. Yeah, nice. That was, uh, I think this was a game where the deck pretty much refused to let you lose because those were some savage top decks. Yeah, we no, they, they, they very the much were. Yeah, it was. Those two top decks were very, 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 very good. So, uh, the, did we need to use the endurance? Doesn't that insulate us? I used it to attack faster. I guess I don't know. I think it was worth it. I think Mike brings up a good point. I think. Um, well, it depends, right? Like, the, to me, in this kind of matchup where the other side has a bunch of creatures, my personal experience is it's very hard to actually win via combat. Like, it can happen. Like, it, it probably would have happened here, potentially, but um, I found that to be a very risky line, and I think I would have held the endurance as well just as a safety net and not died to either some graveyard shenanigans or the combo itself. Um, but, you know, I think the top decks were pretty insane in this matchup, so, uh, glad it worked out. Round six, Mono Green, Cloud Post. Get ready for some quick games. Here we go. Yeah, you finished this, like, really quickly, surprisingly. I, I looked at the times now, and I was like, oh, you, it was, like, right after I fell asleep. <laughs> Yeah, so game one, we keep a hand that's, again, serviceable. Pretty good, depending on what the matchup could be. They played the Reclaimer, and my mind was like, okay, this probably isn't the Mirror. It's probably either Post or Green White. That's, um, let's just play a Hierarch and pass it back. And sure enough, uh, we see a Glimmer Post come down. Uh, plan at this point is just kind of spew a little bit and try to hopefully top deck match order and win before our opponent does anything meaningful. I think, um, kind of the same heuristic, right? Like, I say I don't play the green sun there because I need a payoff, I think I just play the mortuary, right? Yeah, that probably would have been better. They play Pythonio and Grist. We. Because now it's like, how do we win? Yeah. That's fair. It's always interesting to me when they name Grist with Needle. A card that is probably not good in this matchup. On the bright side, I don't think it would have mattered. I think we would have lost anyways. Yeah, it's just... <clears throat> if they've stuck a prime time, very it's rarely are we going to win. Yeah, it's, it's definitely over. I tried to play out a little bit, but... Yeah, ultimately, they end up, like, cycling into <coughs> their... Uh, and we're cool, and then, you know, getting the Caracas here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, uh, I, think, I think I would have saved the Green Sun, but I think we would have lost anyways for what it's worth. All right, well, we got game two here. Oh, yeah, I didn't really put it. Uh... Believe it or not, I feel like I keep this hand. Yeah, I think I just got annoyed by the attracts of being here. And and the, and hear and hear me out. The the reason being is, the once is gonna hit a one drop. The snuff out's insane, and the pick your poison's probably pretty good too. Uh, and you do have inevitability with the artisan anyways. 
So I, I think I keep oh. his hand actually. The uh, the, the the first hand. Yeah, I ended up keeping this instead. This is like reasonable too for what's worth. Like it's proactive. Grab by you just in case I do top deck snuff out. Um which <coughs> I did. That was uh incredible moment. Take a grab the gamer here. Yeah. Just kind of setting up more cardboard than they have, basically. More game pieces. Uh, draw Ms. Mirror Fiend, which was interesting. I actually think that's yeah. a hell of a draw, actually, there. Yeah, it worked out <laughs> great, because, uh, yeah, we yanked the ring. I was like, my uh, gut feeling is that's probably going to be a hell of a draw. Yeah, and now we're ready to just go get Cradle... Have a good time. Yeah, so we respond to the Pithy Needle by grabbing Cradle. Yeah, we're like miles ahead at this point. They get they name Fiend Artisan. We once upon a time grab a higher art. I think Fiend Artisan was in that pile, but I didn't grab it because the needle was on it. Right. Makes sense. Uh and I think we're just preparing to kill them next turn. Yeah, exactly. I'm just holding up Reclaimer again, getting ready to grab like dry and arbor. Uh to ramp up high enough to win. And that should be the game. Yep. Worked out that, that Ms. Merrick Fiend top deck was just insanely savage there. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one time I think main deck Ms. Merrick, or like the Ms. Merrick Fiend did something like just super badass. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, like, there's an argument to me. It, like, straight up won the game. Yeah, it really did. It just stole the card that was going to get them back in it if they could get back in it. All right. <coughs> game three. This, unfortunately, this just kind of goes badly. Um, I keep this hand, I think. I would keep it, too. I think it's, like, reasonable. Yep. Uh, they start clog post. We draw land. I fetch up Bayou. Once upon a time, miss one drop. Big sad. Uh, so so small uh small thing here. The same thing with the mortuary, right? Like making the play patterns difficult. I actually think, given that we're not guaranteed to hit a one drop there, I once first, and if I whiff. Then I play the fetch and then play and then fetch for mortuary so that I can dig, right? That makes sense. Yeah, that was probably it. That was a sequencing error. I think it's like one of those things where like if you don't play with the deck, you don't realize all these little things that make the deck significantly harder to play now. And like I said, I not it's not just you, it's just like myself and I'm sure anybody who picks up this deck, it's gonna happen to them. So here comes the ring and a tabernacle. Oof. And we draw a crater of. It's just it's just getting worse. <laughs> and they're just consistently hitting and we keep top deck and feed artisans. Uh, and I, I honestly think from feet. this point it's the game is probably already over. And the yeah. reason being is because we drew the hoof. Not to yeah, mention the clock is pretty fast. They grabbed a little log. Yeah, I think we can go to the uh, the next match. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we did creep in seventh seed, and we got to play against Snoopy on Reanimator. Um, we're at game one. Uh, knowing what we were up against, I did not keep the sand. Actually, you're on the play. <laughs> I'm like tempted to keep this hand. You know they're on reanimator for what it's worth. I know. I know that you're tempted to keep this hand because obviously turn order claimer is great, but you know that they're just gonna go dark ritual into reanimate and it's not like for matter. me. 
at this point, like, if you if you're a hundred percent sure they're on Reanimator, I think I'm tempted to keep this hand and go turn one Reclaimer. I'm gonna dare you to have the turn one. If you don't, you lose the game. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I did not fly on that axis at all, and I rolled a six, and saw this hand, which I don't think you can keep this hand at all. Well, apparently, I disagree. <laughs> I put the cradle on bottom because I think I was thinking that once upon a time would grab endurance and Atraxa would pitch to endurance. So I, I think there, if it were me, I'd probably once because I hope to hit the Reclaimer, right? It's, but the thing is, like, if you missed it the first time around, you probably don't think about it the second time around where... Uh, you go for the Reclaimer, hope they don't untap, and you will probably win the game. Yeah. So the Grief, taking my Once Upon a Time, and then Dark Grid into Rand, make Gristle Grand. So I guess if I had kept my 7... I mean, that, that, that hand that our opponent had would have beaten anything, for what's worth. Yeah, so... Nothing to really feel bad about here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of played goofy. I think the only uh, hand it doesn't beat is like double endurance, but I mean, what are the odds of that? Yeah. So game two, we take a look at this hand, and I think I probably more. I yeah. shipped it, yeah. And the this reason being is, is you're not guaranteed to two have two mana on two with reclaimer up. But this hand, much better. Uh, For sure. And I think I bottomed Cradle. Because, and the reason I think I did that is because I know I'm going to turn one Foxy's, which means I know that if I do follow up Cradle, I'm not playing Solus Jailer on turn two. And I would rather have a Gris to pitch to Endurance so I can cast a Noble Hierarch. And maybe just top deck the land as my uh, draw step to play Soul Shiller on turn two. Anyway. I, I love that you thought that out. That is actually very heads up in case you drew something irrelevant, right? Right, yeah. So I put the cradle on the bottom after much deliberation and all that. Uh, yeah, I think that it was very heads up. You, you essentially plan out your next turn, which not everybody always does. So, here's the question. Your opponent only has a Badlands as a mana source. Dark Ritual is what's going to push them over the top. They don't have a bomb in hand. Uh, we do have accesses to fight them in the graveyard. Um, show and tell is obviously the thing that is hardest to beat for us uh, without Thoughtseize. Uh where are you at uh, when you cast Thoughts here? Um, Show and Tell is a while before it turns live. And... I feel like if we... I feel like we just take the Animate Dead and just, like, dare them to be... Uh, us in a fair game. Gotcha. So where my thoughts ultimately ended up is that show and tell is not answerable um, outside of this exact card. So here's the thing. If they draw if they draw fatty, they have to unmask themselves, uh, pitching grief, discard fatty. Uh, the or discard big monster, uh, dark ritual into animate dead, uh, bring back monster, uh, but not have a way to check our hand, right? So we do have endurance to answer that if they do end up going for like that line, if they top deck the monster. My, my um, concern is they're gonna just 
strip our hand though, right? Like if we don't take the anime dead. Uh, I think I'm okay with them pitching their entire hand to strip our hand and enter a top deck war. I, I think I'm perfectly happy to do that. And that's when I kind of arrived to the show and tell. So that's just my perspective. Maybe it was correct to do, do it the other way, but I think I'm down to let them pitch everything. To yeah, so so for me, I I give them the show and tell here because they're missing not only the the target in hand, but they're also missing the blue source. Yeah, I just I've been in so many games where those are easy draws for them though. Mm -hmm. Like more mana and finding the blue source among Lotus Petal or Fetchland is not a hard ask off the top of their deck, <coughs> and I think. Letting them have this is scarier than our ability to fight off their entire mm -hmm. And again, I am running the risk. I am running the risk of them pitching everything to strip our hand and us under the top deck floor. But again, I think our deck top deck's better than their deck. And For sure. I agree with that. I guess we'll see how it plays out here. So anyway, take the show and tell. Send it back their way. Badlands comes down, and they do nothing. So, great. We live the dream, right? We play Soul Shaler here, and now uh, now nothing matters anymore. <laughs> they We took the one thing that they can do to circumvent this. Um, again, I got lucky because they decided not to deploy their griefs at all, and now I'm just, like, gaining free real estate. It almost feels like our opponent needs to cast grief on one regardless. But th that's just me. I don't know. Like, given that you took the show and tell. Hmm. And the reason being is because turn two, green sun for reclaimer is a, a very possible line. Maybe they just don't know our deck. Game kind of just plays itself here, I think. I'm just kind of taking up. Setting for two every turn until they block eventually, hopefully, and holding up appearance in case anything goes wrong. So, so Mike, for what it's worth, I paired into this person before. And as much as they play Reanimator, they didn't even know the interaction with Animate Dead and Gris, where it doesn't work. So... Take that for whatever you want. So yeah, I, I, I suspect they may just not know how our deck works. Uh, so we go to game three, and this is this is probably one of the wildest games of the night. <laughs> Okay, I'm so, excited. Alright. You're on the draw. It's game three versus Reanimator, and they just took a mole into six. What are you doing? Uh I'm keeping this high, I think. Okay. Yeah. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. I think uh, I think ultimately daring them to have turn one is totally fine uh, if they're mulliganing um, and just winning with Thoughtseize. Well, would you play Thoughtseize on turn one or would you play Reclaimer on turn one? Uh, this hand to me, is, it kind of plays itself, right? You're going Seize on one, Reclaimer plus Green Sun on two. One, two. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I didn't end up keeping it. I decided because they mulliganed, I was allowed to. Uh, and I got punished. Because, I don't know. Uh, no Thoughtseize, obviously. Mm -hmm. And Reclaimer was, is probably going to be a little too slow. But they mold again. So we mold again. And now we have zero interaction. 
So what are we priced into doing? Only one more time. Yeah, you can't keep this. Welcome to R4. That's probably as good a four as it's gonna get, right? Yeah. But I, I think, like I said, I, I'd probably keep that opening seven and dare them to beat us on turn one. Well, the funny thing here is that this basically is our opening seven, just a version that is four of the cards only that <laughs> mattered. Uh, so that's what we ended up keeping after the several mulligans. Um, we go ahead and we grab the bayou, we throw the Foxies out, and we see Dark Ritual, Reanimate, and Dismember. What are you taking? Um, I think given our hand, we probably take the uh, Dismember. See, I thought that it would be easier to play through the Dismember by getting them to use it on something and then just not caring. And rather than that, just taking their reanimate spell and leaving them with like no part of A and B. Yeah, I think taking reanimate, there's like some merit because they have to draw both combo pieces, but they have so many reanimation spells. I think that is more likely than for them to answer the reclaimer, which <sighs> they would be yeah. hard locked. Is is how I look at it. Well, I took the reanimate. Because the so. problem is, like, if we don't take the dismember, sorry, if we take, if we, yeah, we don't take, our, we don't actually have a, a, a path to victory yet because it answers everything we can do, right? That, that's like a disaster, though. Yeah, drawing the bog was a disaster for sure. Uh, the dismember, the reclaimer, which matters less just because the bog is already out. We draw the ignoble. We get to cast the fiend artisan. Now we're kind of chilling. Yeah, they're on a one-turn clock now. Except they drew another dismember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Faithful swimming finds them a lotus petal and an unmask. We still know they have dark ritual in hand as their only card. We draw an endurance, which is a sick draw. We tag. Yeah, that's one. an obscene draw. And so here's the question. Are you endurancing now to get rid of the faithful suiting, or are you just holding it and waiting? Uh, I'm for sure holding it. it. Okay. Well, I'm for a, a KO here. Yeah. So here's the thing. Because I know they only had Dark Ritual in hand, and letting them follow up Dark Ritual flashback faithful suiting seemed bad, I went ahead and missed it. Now they don't really have Dark Ritual in hand. Like, what are they going to do really, realistically, right? Uh, I think given that you had, you knew that they were on Dark Ritual, that's like fair, I guess. You don't want them to draw. But... Anything. I don't want to give them any draw power. Now we have Reclaimer. Now we have Green Sun, Get Artisan, so we can set up for Solus Jailer. Or get wrist if we need to. Uh, they do reanimate an Elvish Reclaimer and then animate that a Fiend Artisan. So very last ditch effort. Yeah, the game is over by by, by this point. They're doing that. Yeah, it's we're just kind of clean them up. Probably didn't need to use the wrist there, but just. It's over, basically, here. So mm -hmm. that's how we win the quarterfinals against Reanimator. Uh, Semifinals. Going up against Rug Delver. Uh, this match is interesting. So this is our game one hand. Um, they start Volcanic Island, pass it over. We go ignoble and pass it back. Uh, 
We play Counterbalance. Mm. Uh, which is an interesting one. I decided to cast a Green Sun into the days, unfortunately, but, you know, that's the price of business. They did reveal a Delver of Secrets here, so playing a one drop wouldn't have been great anyway. Uh, Green Sun actually gets met by a Force of Will pitching Merc Tide Regent. Uh, I play a Mortuary to follow up, see what's on top, and uh, dump the Signal and pass it back. They wasteland my mortuary and play a Darcy and a Delver. Draw another reclaimer. Um, and try to go for the Shepherd again. Uh, Ponder is revealed. We get the Shepherd onto the table and pass back. They have one card in hand at this point. Uh, they reveal Ponder and Ponder with it. Uh, Putting in this year Rainforest and the Graveyard off Darcy. They do not shuffle. They play a Bobble, uh, putting Questing Druid in the yard, which activates Delirium. Crack it and attack for six, putting me to 14. Their hand's kind of obscene. Huh? Their hand is like pretty obscene here. Yeah, it is pretty nuts. Uh, so we draw a land here. I play a Reclaimer, we get it past kind of balance. They reveal Flooded Strand. Um, fetch, grab another Forest, just get all the Reclaimers down and put some combat in, put them to 17. Uh, stop it right there. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I think this is the situation where... Stop. stop! I think that's a situation where you already have two Reclaimers down, there's no need for a third one. And really, you just want to get to natural order, and so you can get attracted to play, right? I don't. Uh... So, so you would have been able to have a fetch, and then the fetch that you you cracked. Oh, you, know, you could have done the, the mortuary. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see. I fucked that up. Okay. Oops. Cycle that out, grab bog, bog to them. Tack them down to 11. Quick question, why did you main phase bog then? Um, so I could get them up to three fours before attack. Um, I, I would not, I, I would not have done that. Yeah, so, so so Matt's is getting what where I'm getting at, because the way we lose here is if they have like a ball or something, I would wait for them to attack with the DRC and then bog them there because you have lethal with that a uh, natural order anyways. Right. So, so Matt's is saying the same thing. You, you see what I'm saying? Like they're incentivized to attack with their DRC regardless, and you already need the natural order to stick next turn anyway. So. The extra damage doesn't matter. Okay. Does yeah. that make sense? No. Yeah, it makes sense. It so, so, like, the, the extra damage from the Reclaimer doesn't actually change the clock. But you, you but now they know that they can cantrip to turn on the, the, the Delirium for uh, DRC. Whereas, like, you strand their Ponders... Uh, the, if you bog mid combat, yeah, no, I see it. It's something that is like um, different than nor the normal heuristic because you want to bog before pre uh, Murktide, but in this case, we're staring down a lot of damage, so. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, see, I think you stabilize otherwise, right? Like, they're going to turn on Delirium now. Oh, well, that's what I get for playing late at night. Um... I'm glad you got games two and three, though, but uh, I think you know what I mean, right? Like, oh, man, what monster? Yeah. 
No, I, no, I get it. I get it. I just, yeah, it just sucks to internalize that afterwards. I think I would mull this. I kept it because it was land heavy, and I could. I figured I could once upon a time into an untapped source. That's that fair. Happened. It's pro it probably plays magic like just fine. The bog is probably really good. Laggy. Okay. Um, That's a hell of a draw. Yeah, it was a really good draw. I took the time to set up here just because I want to make sure the artist and results. Um. I think I would just play the shepherd, personally. And just dies to bolt, and then you don't get the uncountable pain person, right? Say that again. It just dies to bolt, and then you don't get the uncountable pain person, right? Um, I don't think we need pain artisan to be uncountable in this matchup. Like, they can always bolt pain artisan too, for what it's worth. Like, if they want to bolt the shepherd, I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, but I played we the got shepherd. them to bolt a mana dog instead, which just seems way better. Um, I, yeah, I, I kind of play this matchup a little bit differently. I think if we have mana, we're probably going to win. And I think if they want to bolt the Shepherd, or they want to force the Artisan, I'm fine with that. Like, here it's a little more dangerous, right? Now, now we can't cast the Artisan if we don't draw a land. So I think yeah, I would have played the Shepherd. Yeah, but we're, we're better lucky than good. Ah, oh, damn it. I thought we were going to draw it. I thought we did. Ah, oh well. Clearing out three card types here with Bog. Yeah, I think for sure this turn is a Bog turn, but same thing, right? I think I would have just ran Shepherd out. The other thing is, like, you're more mana efficient that way, too. Seeing the mana dog see all the removal though, which is yield. Now we got a 4-4 Fiend Artisan, 5-5 Fiend Artisan. For the stuff, 420 KU. So they brainstorm, they find Bolt for Shepherd, and then Unholy Heat right on time for Peter Anderson, which was too bad. Um. Fall 14, draw land, hold it for now. Ponder, wasteland, ponder again. Attack three, over. Draw a green sun, so you go to get endurance, it resolves, you get the endurance, we shuffle everything back, damage back on. I think if it were me there, I think it's catastrophic if uh, your opponent has a daze. I'd probably just 
held up Reclaimer for the, the Cradle. They had one card in hand. I wasn't feeling it, honestly. Like, I just... If it stays, it stays. I, I think I'm okay with that. They have a removal for sure. They're attacking. Yeah, no. They they revealed the bolt. Uh, I knew it was there. Uh -huh. uh, I just wanted to trade out the flyer. Um, and still yeah, be fair. ahead in the race. They still trade out their bolt. So, uh... Goes back to our turn. Draw a cradle. Not really the most helpful thing in the world. Put them six. They seek the beast end of turn, uh, which finds them uh, Murktide and Brainstorm, which is pretty much a nightmare. Uh, they ponder to get the Murktide a little bit bigger. They do combat first, so they get the Delirious attack and then Murktide region. At which point we top deck Green Sun Zenith <laughs> right on time uh, to get Grist. Put the Smirk Tide into the graveyard and or stay back because we want to. I think the uh, deck, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying Grist. this. I think the deck really decided we're not going to lose today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, through all my through all my like bad plays. Uh, no, I think I think uh, Mots brought up a good point. I think you were actually right to play the uh, the Green Sun for endurance there because I I agree that there probably was enough time. I probably would have lost there. Mortuary found Canoptic Scarab Storm on top, which was kind of sick. Uh, so we left that there. Oh right, so this is where we got baited. We got so we got so baited. Let me back up for a second. So earlier this turn, they deployed Graft Digger's Cage, and my brain reacted to get Dryad Arbor while I still could with this on stack. And then as I thought about it more, I decided I wanted the Mortuary more during the search, and so my brain misfired. And I ended up tapping down my Reclaimer unnecessarily in response to Cage, which allowed Darcy to kill uh, Gris. Right. Uh, there was no, no, absolutely no reason for me to actually react to this Cage at all. I should have just been holding up my blocker and then end step, get the Mortuary, accomplish the same shit, and have a Gris. Right. Uh, so I completely fucked that up. Um, Thankfully, thankfully, it didn't end up mattering. Also, I'd like to go ahead and just now, really quick, address the gigantic time differential <laughs> uh, in this matchup because it is going to come up. Um, so, yeah, we did see the Canoptic Scarab Swarm, and the reason I'm attacking here first is because uh, I am planning on targeting, uh, well... No, actually, I ended up even targeting myself. I thought I was going to, uh, but then I ended up deciding Delirium was more important, and I'll take the less insect tokens uh, just to shut off the Darcy's coming back online. Uh, I think that's the correct play. They do brainstorm, and they leave whatever they found on top, uh, but don't proceed to play anything afterwards. I just take the three here because I'm at a high enough life total that it's not going to matter at the moment. I do draw this stuff out and I'm going for lethal here, but obvious, pretty obviously uh, they probably have an answer to this and then they do. Uh, it is a petty theft to bounce one of the insect tokens. And they go for delirium as well here. Uh, they hit Gaze, where they already have an instant, then they hit a land. That gets bounced, they go to one. I feel like you attack with a Reclaimer there too, right? Uh, I left it back in case I needed to block Westing Druid for whatever reason and expend the snuff out on something else. Because I am dangerously low here. No, but the, but the reason is, like... You force them to block with the DRC, so you get that for free. 
Yeah, I guess so, but it also does put a creature into their graveyard and puts them dangerously close to activating the other one. Uh, pros and cons? I don't know. I think you still end up ahead because, like I said, the, the DRC trades and then the snuff out hits the questing beast and at most they deal three. And if they have delirium, they can't stop it anyways. So they have Brazen Borrower, Days of own Brazen Borrower to try to get Delirium online. However, they fail in doing so. Uh, they don't even pay the one to keep the Brazen Borrower, which makes my job easier. Uh, I They come in. Call me the best top decker. <laughs> uh, which I respond with the deck is designed to do exactly that. Quippingly. Um, and I end up winning this game. So, uh, yeah, uh, that was game two. Could have been better, but oh well. Uh, that's a good point by Mox, too, like because of the delirium, yeah. If they have Vault, then potentially you lose. Yeah. All right. And into game three. Keeping a one lander, which can be a little light, but we're on the draw. We have the ones upon time, and we have a bunch of stuff to play with the one land, so I didn't hate it. And we also have parents, so. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I would keep this, for sure. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Uh, we did draw Dryad Arbor. We once upon a time. Five guys, Cradle. Uh, Your hands are shelf like supercharged right now. Yeah, they really did. Uh, play out Noble Heart. Also, yeah, this is turn one. They do have two minutes and 30 seconds left. I do have 12 minutes left. Uh, so. uh, also, if they daze your Noble Heart, I think we're winning this game. Because because they're setting themselves back and they don't have any pressure. Yeah, they have absolutely nothing going on right now. And I'm just happy to go ahead and just. Run their clock down nice and smooth. Smooth sailing. You're miles ahead right now. <coughs> Claimer gets Force of Will. Um, I think I endurance an upkeep here. Yep. They do have the force for it though, which is kind of like a bummer. Uh, they don't have delirium yet though, which is nice. We end up deciding to trade with the Darcy, just because it's their only thing on table. And they have one card in hand, mm -hmm. minute left. Just why not? We draw another <laughs> noble, and now we got our own Delver. Uh, gets driver wasted. We draw another land, so we can fetch the land that saved Cradle Control. <laughs> uh, they do draw a time region, which is like, ooh, big scary, right? But. It's okay. We got the land that's safe for animal control. Let's put Misty Rainforest in, which puts us right into a grist. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> right on time. This deck really just refused to let you lose today. Or yesterday. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Ponder. It's it's like the fifth top deck we've had already in the in the event. Yeah, and then I think I put the Shepherd on the stack, and with 40 seconds left, they decide that's enough. Uh, <laughs> and we go to the finals. Um, you gotta, I got to say, I was a bit relieved to see my opponent open with 80 cards. Uh, can can you pause one, one second? I got to yeah. uh, use the restroom real quick. Yeah, uh, we'll stop right here before the finals. Yeah. One second. Feel free to ask the uh, chat. 
cure in anything. It's nice to know that there's room to improve. It's just, it's hard because I feel like I should know some of these things. I, I feel like I should, have, I should have played more tightly, but maybe it was late. I don't know. I don't know. There could have been a few reasons, but glad that it all worked out in the end anyway. Uh, I am getting ready to play the Pioneer RCQ season, yeah. Uh, deciding between whether or not I want to spend more money on vampires or less money on fiends. And All right, I'm back. Really considering any other decks, so. All right, welcome back, Newton. Um, so, let's, uh, get started. So, opponent reveals Yorion. Um, and we open with this hand. Uh, so we just throw out once upon a time and we see all the goodies that they have to offer. Uh, I think I ended up taking Harvestin because we do have Reclaimer to get Cradle. Yeah, I, I think I would also take the Fiend Artisan here because we we're missing a payoff. Yeah. And I think turn two, if they don't do anything, we just like run out all our Reclaimers. Yep. Yeah. They get the stone forge, they tear blind slash, so Calder's already in hand, I imagine. Get her player down, just get ready to activate. They do. Put the calder down and play. Uh, it's really niche, but uh, small, small thing. Yeah. I think I would have fetched for Bayou main phase already, so that you don't randomly lose to like if if you end step fetch, they can go like either swords plus solitude or like sword swords or something like that. Oh, interesting. Like it's very narrow, but it can't. It's like something that can't happen. So I typically like will main phase the fetch because I don't want to randomly lose the re removal with the fetch trigger on the stack. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, uh, yeah, so moving on to uh, their end step, they did miss a land drop, notably. Um, so that's helpful. <coughs> we fetch out a, we take out a, uh, forest for a guy's cradle, and surely we can be trusted with this. Um, so we grab, or we fiend artisan, and we essentially double artisan to play around swords or solitude, um, and send in some damage. They waste our cradle, send back five, we untap draw, bog, but again, 
Uh, we got a lot of power in play, so we're just swinging back for the race. Um, they solitude. One reclaimer. Go to 10. We bog them after the fact, holding up endurance. They sort to pleasures, another reclaimer. We go down to 11 from the, or 9 from this attack because we gained so much life off the solitude and the swords, uh, which allows us to play endurance here. So, so and... I think this is more of a philo philo philosophical difference. Um, Again, uh, in these matches where there's a lot of creatures on the other side, my experience is the aggro plan is like pretty inconsistent. I probably wouldn't. I, I probably would have just left the reclaimer just to get the cradle, and then activate the artist in the next turn instead of applying pressure at least on that specific board state. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I did get lucky and I topped that cradle for the win here. <laughs> I think that's because... the uh, the recurring theme of tonight, right? Like. This deck does bail us out more often than not. Yeah, it just kind of alley oops the wins. Uh, game two. Uh, I wonder how this all. I feel like this hand's pretty good. Yeah, this hand's quite good, I think. Our air base is sent it back. It's a little soft to uh, a removal spell, unfortunately. Yeah, they do have Stone Forge on turn two here. Uh, to get Cauldra, we just kind of barf out some creatures and hope for the best. They hold up their stone forge, which to me screams like also containment priest. Um, so one thing, um, I think on the previous turn I would have just gone collector oop into artisan, only because it's more mana efficient. Oh yeah, I guess so. Oh well. All right. Reclaimer and play the Ufi because I'm trying to go wide for a natural order. Uh, I decide to also try to spring the trap here a little bit. Um, I should have done, I should have waited to do this for free just because Chris gets around this, but oh well, at least we can rule out that the priest is there now. We slay the cradle, unfortunate. Put the cauldra for the war. Uh, unfortunate draws all around. Trying to trade off the containment priest. Don't get any bites on that. They swing back and play recruiter. And at this point, I just kind of scoop up just because I'm going to need a lot to get out. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I didn't want to deal with it beyond this point, so... Uh, yeah, I think looking back on that game, yeah, uh, it definitely would have been more mana efficient to do the uh, Fiend Artisan into Collector if you play. I, I think sure. that was more minor, to be honest. I think the big takeaway, uh, for me at least, is when you pitch the High Arc, uh, and without um, leading Reclaimer up, you're a little bit susceptible to the Wasteland. And that's, I think, what ultimately lost the game more than anything else. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, we'll go to game three. And this game is one of those games where I feel like I probably should have just lost. Um, but the 
detected one more favor one more time. So, <laughs> oh, uh, that was a really quick disappearing seven. Let's just make sure that I didn't throw something away that was playable. Um, I would mold this hand because the natural order is dead, right? You have the attracts in hand. Right, exactly. Uh, so I did throw it. Um, come to keep the six, throw a natural order back on bottom. And begin. Grab forest. Let's spot time and defeat artisan. Noble. Uh, they... Play Marsh Flats, I play out a Fiend Artisan, and attack for one. So here, um, I, I'm assuming it's just late at night and you're just on autopilot, but I think you just play out the fetch land there to hedge against Bowmasters, right, in case they target it? Oh, yeah. I've Well, I, I think also I was just trying to bait out them to, like, kill Fiend Artisan with Bowmasters so I can just untap a natural order for Atraxa. Oh, that's... I guess that's fair. Like, this is this is too juicy, right? Like, anybody's gonna go for this. Uh, yeah. And they did. Fair. I I think, uh... You know, it's, it's definitely asking them to fall into the trap, right? Yep. So we grab Atraxa, grab a bunch of cards. Um... Uh, yeah. I probably, in hindsight, should have grabbed Thoughtseize over Natural Order. Uh, I think on this board state, I like Natural Order still. Okay. Hindsight, yeah, though, is the reason I'm saying that I think this is a turn where everything kind of goes badly because they end up deploying an opposition agent. Mortuary sees a little harder. So um, here, I actually ended up keeping the Noble Hierarch because Exalted is our natural uh, way of overcoming Opposition Agent. Would you have done that? Um, I think that's true against like Mono Black because we just don't have any better. I think uh, against this uh, specific board state, I'm probably just hoping it's it's tough because we don't have a removal outside of the grist, right? Right, exactly. I, I'm trying to think what we dig into, and I think the the the, the line here is probably just like we want big um, fiend archers just attack pass instead of the the exalted high arc. So I'd probably just bid to be honest. I, I'm not sure. sure against a deck like taxes where they have a bunch of creatures that the aggro plan like is the same thing, right? Is gonna work. They recruited for Stoneforge here. Noble, Once Upon a Time, Find Fiend Artisan, Play Fiend Artisan. Uh, attack for five, <coughs> get them to block with Orc Army, pass back. So. They grab sort of light and shadow. That is an interesting card. I and just like that, the deck bails us out one more. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, so we grist. We kill the opposition agent. We natural order the noble hierarch away. We find the creator of behemoth, and that's lights out. Boom, boom. Wow, that's pretty sick. I think uh, 
Only thing there I would have maybe changed was uh, the hierarch was not sick, right? So I think one thing you could have done was like reclaimer for arbor and then play the, your cradle. And then um, I don't know if you have enough mana or not. I don't have to look, but uh, actually the the wasteland. The, well, yeah, you can get the cradle and the natural order that away for a little more damage. But at that point, it's just like cherry on top, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, we talked back to Gris here in the opposition agent to clear it up, win the game, and that's all she wrote. Uh, challenge winner is me. So, yeah. Big congrats, um, Kurt. I think, uh, you know, that thanks. was a long grind. We got through the, uh, not only the challenge, but the review of the challenge. So, just want to congratulate you again. I know, uh, obviously, like, Mots, in my opinion here, is like, a very good technical player and then uh we're just going through combing through the the plays and then uh a lot so a lot of people can learn and uh i think you definitely show that the deck is very powerful and then you know even though you were just picking up you know for the first time in terms of this version of the deck it was you were able to you know run the table so to speak so big yeah players. i i mean it's awesome it feels good to know that next time i sit down uh i will be armed with a lot more knowledge and uh be able to close the door easier on matchups and uh maybe get a little streaky uh <laughs> maybe uh, you'll see another topic next week hopefully so we'll for what it's worth occurred every time i've watched you uh you know play these challenges once you 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 top a one, I I think you tend to be like streaky, like we mentioned, and then uh, you know get a couple in a row. Especially now, I think the big takeaway was um, the as kind of an overall theme, uh, the sanctuary lines. I think will be more obvious uh, once you get a couple more. Um, now that you see it yourself, like from a third person perspective, right? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's gonna take a little bit more time for me to comfortably fall into it, and it's gonna be a little unnatural at first. But uh, once I get down uh, more of the fetching, the mortuary lines, I will. I yeah, I mean things will improve. So yeah, I think it's one of those things to to me. Like, I found my I I caught myself a, a few times when I first. You know, was iterating through this deck too, and I, I, I'm sure like Mots maybe can, can say the same thing. And other people were picking the deck, but uh, it's one of those things where it's not so much that you don't know the line. It's just like you just have to ingrain the muscle memory more than anything else. Yeah, I think so. But uh, yeah, no, this was great. This is educational. I really want to thank you for having me, and I especially want to thank Mots for. Uh, taking the time to be in your chat and also point things out because I very much value, uh, yeah. you know, seeing the better ones and having his knowledge is it's, it's, uh, invaluable. So, yeah, I, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, Mots is the OG Golgari King, right? Like, especially anything combat related. I, I'm just going to like in the dark defer, defer to him that he's, he's right. I'm wrong. Uh, especially with regards to that. So, uh, it's nice to have him here on, uh, you know, chat, you know, watching through us, correcting, uh, you know, the, the lines from myself and from you. Uh, so that was nice. Anybody have any questions for either myself, for Mots, for uh, Curran here? I'm sure this is going to be the first of many top eights for you, Curran, with this new list that, uh, you know, yeah. with the land that saved this this deck, so to speak, right? Yeah, the land that saved Cradle Control. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know it shouldn't be called Cradle Control. I know, buddy. <laughs> we gotta, uh, we gotta make our whole. Or... Yeah. Okay. I guess if there are no questions, I'm gonna, you know, raid. Uh, I don't even know. Let's see. Let's raid Matt Grenier. I guess right. He's doing Vintage Cube. Uh, thank oh, you, right. everybody, for hanging out. Here, are my socials again. Uh, Kern, feel free to pop your socials here on the uh, the chat. Before we uh, head out. Yeah.